joining us on the show today. A lot of people know him around the show. Current UCF head coach, former Auburn head coach, Gus Malzahn. Coach, also my former boss for everybody out there as well. Coach, how's it going, man? How's everything in Orlando? Hey, going good. Hey, we miss you around here. You did a great job when you were with us. Appreciate you saying that, Coach. Appreciate you saying that. Holding down the fort, though, everything getting adjusted in the new Big 12? Yeah, we, we are. I mean, the Big 12 has been a game changer for us. Um, you know, we got our feet wet last year, had a few growing pains, but, you know, I really think we're trending in the right direction. We're getting ready for spring ball to start this coming Monday. Um, so there's a lot of excitement right now. That's awesome. Good to hear. So, Coach, let's get right to it. What makes you, just in today, I mean, well, I was calculating, what is this going to be in 24, this will be your 22nd season as a head coach in college? What, what are we, oh, no, sorry, 13th, sorry, 13th season going in? How many, because you Arkansas State, Auburn, now yep. you're going to UCF. Yep. What makes yep. you wake up every morning? What motivates a guy like Gus Malzahn, who, Coach, I mean, you've had arguably as much success as anybody else in the country. So what makes you get out of bed every morning and be like, hey, I got to go get better every day? Yeah, Dave, I, you know, it's the same feeling I got the first year I coached high school football. I mean, just having a job where you get a chance to spend time with players and, uh, you know, put a goal and put a dream and do everything you can to, to achieve those and just that daily relationships with your players and watching them grow, um, you know, physically, mentally. Uh, that, that's just really what makes me tick. That's good. It's good to hear. Coach, now – Again, you've been doing it for a while. If you had any advice for a guy that's going to strive to be a head coach in college football at the power, let's call it power four now, what do you think is the biggest strength that a head coach has to have now? I don't I don't think we can kind of add yeah. this into another question as well. What is something like an average fan wouldn't understand the day-to-day -day schedule that a head coach has to take on? Yeah, um, I tell you what, just in the last two years, <laughs> the job description of a head coach has completely changed. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is more now, really, my job is the the personnel, and it's like a, a GM for the NFL, and roster management is completely different. Uh, the portal, you have to recruit your own players. You know, I made some in-home visits to, you know, some of our, our players, current players, so that that's new. Uh, it's just like, it's almost like a new profession in a way the last two years with the, um, you know, the NIL, uh, dealing with agents. I mean, obviously that was, uh, that was a learning experience, but hey, that's the new age of college football. And, you know, I think your first question, like, I think it's more about adapting. I, I really think head coaches have to adapt more than anything. Uh, me being an older coach, it was probably a little harder for me. It's probably a little easier for these young guys because that's all they know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's about adapting, I think, uh, in the new age of college football. I mean, you know this, but we're at a school that's a young school that's really set up, you know, for the future and, and things that go with it. But uh, I think that's the biggest thing for me. Coach, you brought it up, and actually one of your guys, obviously the head coach at Arizona State, uh, Coach Dillingham, worked with you as the OC at Auburn for what I believe 2019, was it? It was one year at Auburn. But 2019, yep. he brought up kind of like, hey, coaches need to stop whining from that standpoint. Me and you probably would have had these conversations if I'm still there. Me and you were talking personnel like we used to. What's your thoughts on the recruiting calendar? What's some fixes that Coach Malzahn would like to see implemented, if there's any? I, I would like to hear your sense, two cents on this. Yeah, I, I, th I think get more guidelines, um, you know, and, and whatever we're doing, you know, sticking to it. And that way a coach can get in a routine. I mean, just the challenge of for this year, for example, we're getting ready to play a bowl game. We're at the bowl site. We have high school signing day. That's a really big deal. And then as the bowl game's over, the one time, I mean, the uh, transfer portal opens up. You're meeting with your players. Uh, you're recruiting, uh, you know, uh, the transfers. I mean, it's just like there's no time. You used to after the ball game, you had a couple weeks to catch your breath and all that. There's zero time for that. So I think more than anything, it's just that the, the powers that be, you know, make some rules, set with it, whatever it is, so a coach can get in a routine and try to have a little bit of a life outside of football. Yeah, I saw some interview with Kirby Smart. He was mentioning the coaches like nobody's in. I know you, Coach May how I worked with you twice. It, it's not that coaches don't want to work. I mean, it, it, it's kind of all everybody does is sleep, eat, and breathe football. Like you just said, though, it's guidelines. or has got to be some parameters, boundaries. Like you said, everybody's willing to go get their hands dirty and work. It's just let's have some more clear boundaries here so guys like you can go operate, guys on your staff can go operate. 
That, that's exactly right. I mean, there's not a whole lot of time. I mean, obviously, you know this. I mean, the recruiting is 24-7, and that phone really runs your world. But just uh, from a coach's standpoint, to be able to give your – uh, you know, coaches off a specific time to spend with their ta- their family and just have a, a, qual- a good quality of life. And that's the biggest challenge right now. I mean, it's like uh, there's no really off time right now because of the portal. That's really changed everything. All right, Coach, changing gears a little bit here. Uh, I've asked every coach I've had on this show, basketball, football. Uh, I thought I got this question really from Clay. Listen to a Clay Travis interview with one of your buddies, Bruce Pearl, and he asked him this. So I thought this stuck with me. If you could have – Again, you're, you've are you been a successful coach everywhere you've been, Coach. You won at the high school level. OC, y'all won the SEC West the year you were at Arkansas. Obviously won the national championship at Auburn 2010. Won the SEC West multiple times. SEC championship while you are the head coach at Auburn. If you could have one, let's just say play, game, whatever you want to call it, back in your entire career, what what game, what play would that be? <laughs> well, I, I probably got, yeah. yeah. Of course, you think about, uh, you know, games you lost that that uh, were important plays probably uh the national championship game against florida state um late in the game i mean they're driving it was like a third and eight third and nine and it was kind of one of those uh, moments on the sideline that i just remember thinking i need a timeout didn't call a timeout and uh, i think we had a pass interference on on the call and then obviously they went and scored that's probably the, the one thing that really sticks with me. Now, there's all kinds of other ones I should have done better in certain moments, but that's one of those ones because, you know, you end up losing, you're at the national championship game, and you're that close to winning. That's one that, uh, you know, we'll see. I don't know if it would have changed anything or not, but I'd feel a lot better if I'd have called time out there. Probably with the implications of that game, probably just sit a little differently as well than just your regular yeah. week seven, week eight game. Right. And, Coach, again, you, you just brought up Auburn. I thought I'd ask you this question again. I know you and him are buddies, but thought I'd ask you, current head coach, obviously at Auburn, Hugh Freeze, if you could give Hugh Freeze, again, you've been at Auburn, you saw it from a coordinator standpoint, you saw it as a head coach for multiple years. You were there just as long as anybody. Um, what would you give him one one piece of advice on succeeding at Auburn, matching the level of success you had there on the Plains? We, we talked quite a bit, um, even before he took the job, and then when he first got the job. But, you know, Coach Dye gave me some advice you know, the first day I was hired as head coach, he said, he said, Gus, if you'll think about nothing but how you're going to beat Alabama for 365 days a year, everything will t- everything else will take. It makes, you know, and uh, so that that's really what stands out to me, and that's advice I'd give him. Awesome. Well, coach, a couple more questions again. Appreciate you joining us. You just brought up, be- beating, up Al- beating Alabama. You had were you first of all were you shocked Nick Saban retired when he did? Did you ever hear? I don't know how much you and him talk, but again, do you were you shocked when yeah. you kind of found out probably on social media like everybody else? No, you know I really wasn't shocked uh, at, as far as him getting out this year. I mean, the, the college football is completely different than it was like we talked about, and you know he's the best to ever do it, and uh, so I think you know he was probably. Um, you know, why is getting out right now? But, you know, uh, it didn't surprise me. Coach, it's going to lead me into my other one. Why, why do you think, again, we used to talk about it when I was in your office. We used to talk about it in recruiting. Why do you think you had more success against him than anyone else did? Well, like, why do you think you beat him three times? Do you think that was just the preparation, just locking in that week? You talking about Coach Die saying, hey, beating yeah. Alabama is a big deal. Like, why do you think yeah. you had such an edge everyone else could, did it? Well, first of all, we had good players. I mean, you have to have good players, first of all. So that uh, – and then I think more of it's a mindset. I mean, when you're at Auburn, I mean, that's that's part of the job description and uh, believing uh, that you can beat them. And like I said, you gear up all year, and, you know, it's not a shock to your system when you beat them. And, you know, I think a lot of people also, you know, you'd watch them. They'd try to trick them and things like that. And you, you can't trick, a, you know, a team like that. And, of course, he's – you know, I, in my opinion, the best coach to ever walk the planet. And he had really good players. So you had to play really good. And we always said, man, we're going to get to the fourth quarter and uh, get the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, we're going to find a way to win. So that was really all, always our mindset against those guys. 
Last question here, Coach. Anything, any hobbies you've picked up while being in Orlando? I know you're a big golf guy. Lee was telling me you're going golfing tomorrow. You, Miss Christie, you got the grandkids. What's going on when you when you do get some breathing time here in today's college football ecosystem? Yeah, what, well, what well, yeah. First of all, there's some great golf courses here, okay? And uh, now, I, I've only played twice since July, but, you know, after spring ball, you get a chance to play more. The weather's off the charts here. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. I've got four grandkids now, and so uh, me and Chrissy – we spend a lot of time with them. So, you know, it's uh, it's a real good time to, you know, to coach here. And, and of course, with Christy, you know, I, we, we try to do this coaching thing together. So, uh, you know, we, we, we really like it here. Well, Coach, I appreciate you taking some time out of your busy day, about to kick up spring ball. Again, I think the Big 12 is wide open. I think UCF has as high of a ceiling after working there, seeing it, working with you day to day. Is anybody in that league now? Uh, I wish y'all nothing but the best in 2024. And again, I appreciate you taking some time to uh, join us this uh, morning. All right, Dave. Hey, hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. You, you do a great job with that show, man. Appreciate it, coach.